Yeah, I believe that was Dex. The, Dex. The, uh, Shout out to Dex. Yeah, yeah. So maybe we'll have another like historic stat line here as maybe North can can beat Astralis. No better time to do it when they don't have five of their players. It's true. This Starting lineup, true. I should say. Starting lineup. The star-studded lineup. The star-studded. But we do still have Device over here towards the back of Sandbag. Zipex through the smoke denies Chris to. And now Device is going to start revealing himself. He's able to get one, now two, potentially a third, until Gade's able to answer with something. But with that first kill from Gade, he finds himself in a one versus five situation. So North, yeesh, it's going to be a tough spot. They uh, they kind of dismantled their opponent yesterday here on Vertigo. It looked really good for them, but I think Pimp has a lot of good points when he's arguing that Astralis have always been strong on Vertigo. They kind of adopted it and made sure to plug that hole early when it was included into the rotation. So we will see. What they yeah. can do. But, uh, this one, I mean, listen, poor guy gets shot through a smoke by a USP. How do you stop that? It's a weird one, actually. I was looking at that. I was like, that's a pre-fire spam, but how come that bomb didn't get planted out of, uh, out of, out of the view of that player behind it? So I don't know exactly how that happened, but Zipex seemed to know exactly where the bomb would get planted. So just nice and perfect from him, obviously. No smokes, no walls stop him. No one VX situation stops him. Nothing stops Zipex. He decides when he wins or loses. The mastermind. The mastermind. The clutch god. The five head. And the ready for anything in this round type by MP5, umps. It's been a while since we've had the UMP in plays. Mm -hmm. I'm down for that. We've got a nice uh, a nice melange of SMGs in the mix. But here's Yugi. Out of the corner, they thought they had found timing on poor Dupree. He fumbled that smoke grenade. It bounces off the wood. They thought maybe they could pressure him. But Yugi, the landmine from behind, <laughs> destroys them all, racks up that cash, and moves us to the 2-0 start. That's a great pet name, the landmine from behind. That's awesome. Yeah, you never want to walk backwards into a landmine. At least you, if you walk forwards into a landmine in a minefield, you could brace yourself because you knew what kind of danger you're getting to. It blows up behind you, that's going to hurt even more. You're going to have no ass after that. So that's not a landmine that you want to walk into, the Yugi landmine sitting on the stairs behind you. Well, he's... Not going to find much action this time because we have North already trying to fumble their control on A. Ooh, that one hurts. Poor MSL. He was just trying to contest the tarp through the smoke, through the flashbangs. He gets spammed, dies to the wall bang in the end. So uh, a flying start here from Astralis and North yet again over towards this A site. Very quickly kind of turned down and they'll sit outside of it. But uh, they seem keen to get their eyes back up this ramp. Really interesting position. So Matt is going to try to catch the lurks. The meta still hasn't changed much at A. They changed the material, but it's all about this fight. Up the ramp versus smokes, hopping over sandbags, trying to get control on the wrap. And then on the other side of the map, it's like a different map entirely. You know, B has so much more to do with mid and B by itself. And A is like all on its own. So we've got two different factions now working together to defend. A kind of a nice bait setup to get some extra damage in. Most importantly, to get some info, a nade off and fall back. Oh, another little re-engagement here for Dupree. So making sure that he doesn't just give them all of that real estate, keeping those forward angles. It's been uh, a real pleasure watching this B bomb site develop as time goes on. But at this moment, not looking too easy to get into. Yugi is going to finish this one off. He is kind of looking hot this morning. It was a cool start to their best of three yesterday for Yugi. Uh, had a tough job trying to slot into that Ivy play on train. And now, so far so good. So three rounds down and North back to the pistols. We're back on the pistols. They have three kills in total, all on Gade. Connor, I want to get your thoughts. What, how do you feel about the uh, B site changes and mid changes? Right. Well, let's focus on B off the gate. I, I, I like, first of all, that quad is no longer as thick. You know, you can still have a player play that post plant, but there's a far less cover. Um, I think that kind of clears up that corner, which was, I think, too much of a focus point on certain rounds. Like, uh, I don't I don't like the ability to just to just hide and cower and have to retake thinking of that corner consistently. So anything that's more open gives us longer ranges for uh, gun duels. I'm all for it, Mohan. I'm with you. I, yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense to me. It, it was It's too much of a pressure point for all the action in the round. Uh, and just like this corner on A ramp, where a lot of the duels happen towards A, 
it feels like that's something that maybe needs to be developed in the future. And at the moment is a bit one dimensional in terms of the fights coming up a ramp. So yep. I, I hope that gets uh, gets some action, some change maybe. Uh, I but... think it would merit it. I think when the map comes out, a lot of it's kind of just first understanding like where in professional play our gun fights and, and engagements are going to fall across the map. And I think that when, when Vertigo was released or introduced rather, um, like top mid was supposed to be this big focus point and, and, and now we're understanding what's going on at B and where people get clumped up and where people feel claustrophobic and we fixed that. So I, I completely agree that now A should be the same thing and, and on that angle you mentioned. But enough of map theorizing because we have a very real round ahead of us. Guns up for North is the fifth time the charm. Well, Flashbang successful over towards the A site. They've already been able to keep that off at bay. There is still the threat of a short player looming near, and now a second as Magus tucks in. Yeah, they fall back. Think about using grenades. Magus gets pushed up kind of close, which is going to be really valuable. An amazing grenade here at the feet of MSL to kick things off. AZ posted up on the ramp, very threatening position, but if he pops up, I mean, Device could actually just shoot him. And that's some info. There was somebody behind enemy lines, a bit too close for comfort. Device lets him go back, but they already know there's at least a few people there. Oh man, that oh, is a big, bold, see the Kobe. beautiful angle. Ooh. Not bad. Gade's oh. legs almost taken out from underneath him, but what you can do with a grenade, North can do better with wall bangs. Magisk, lucky to be alive. And you have to wonder whether that would have served as a trigger for the execute. If they get that pick, do they immediately try to flex the man advantage into this A site? Because we do still have North very much grouped up outside of this. And at the same time, Astralis, same basket. Four members of their defense here on A. And with 30 seconds left, and this utility being volleyed over, they're ready for the hit. So they're looking to bunker and hunker down. Another piece of utility, but the Molotov gets extinguished in the smoke and that leads them to walk right into Zipex. He's only gonna find the first kill. We've got a boost on PT to get vision over smoke. It works fantastically for the first. Now they're gonna try to jump up over it as well. MSL, he's shut down and it's a three versus two in the post plant. So at least North have gotten this bomb down and the CTs are tasked to the retake. Dupree comes out from elevator, but this is both members of North on ramp. And they're gonna wait. They're gonna chill. CTs peek out on short because of that flash. They're starting to wrap. They're gonna get this pinch and Dupree isolating the 1v1s makes it look all too easy. Now there is the pressure of the defuse. Yugi calculates it down to the wire, but that's the 5-0 start that Astralis had hoped for. Wow, that's a beautiful confidence there from Yugi. I guess, you know, his teammate could come in and get the defuse if he doesn't get it, but down to the last tick on that defuse, very nicely done with the time ticking down as well. He had to step into that fire, so. But, ah, a site Vertigo, as ugly as we remember. The meta hasn't changed much. Do you know what is the worst part about all that? Is even though the fight goes down to like the 30 second mark, not a single T has to go back and watch a flank because there's no threat of a CT trying to big flank. Nobody's willing to take that risk right now. And that means that it's a, it's a stalemate in some sense. Oh. Uh, over on the A site, but uh, this is a big opening kill. And again, you see how yeah, drawn that... out these rounds get. A lot of it comes down to, can they make something happen before they enter the site? I'm a little surprised by Zipex's decision there. He, he, he just tries so hard to spam through that yellow tarp and get the opening kill that, that he leads himself to the two-man push up in his face. It's almost like he expected somebody to be holding ramp for him as he commits to the 30-bullet spray down. But uh, regardless, that's a very easy opening pick for North and they will happily take a five versus four. They completely transition over to this B bomb site. So now Dupree's gonna feel the heat. He's spammed through smoke. Chris do six cents as he drops that one and goes one better. Hard entries, clean headshots, and a five versus two on B. Just an amazing set of entries there from Chris do. Looked like he never stopped holding A, just running left across the screen, shooting. I am shocked, first of all, the, the initial kill was a straight headshot through the smoke on the entry. I think just assuming that somebody was sitting in that corner and then the second one was great. Now, I mean, wasting no time, I think, was the big difference between whoever was there, generator, looking to the right, and 
holding the left, you know, him wasting absolutely no time in that moment. So doing a great job of space creation there. And Chris Dew is a player who uh, I haven't been impressed by, at least not, not in their last series. And I don't know how you feel about him, but we know obviously with an organization of this stature, there's a lot of, you know, oh. a lot of thought that goes into picking up a player like this, right? Or any player. Young, young player. To be a fifth, right, on the roster, this is a pretty big deal. So even if a young player may be a bit nervous or have bad performances at first, I think it's uh, worth our time to try to try to figure out what are the positives and what is the potential. Yeah, well, potential for a follow through here on this A site. Magus down to two HP. We had more members of Astralis on this bomb site at the start of the round, probably trying to curb back what was that early aggression we saw from North last round, where they succeeded in the 5v4. Device back on his bold angle, very much exposed to short. MSL tries to tuck back in. There was a chance for Zipex to swing wide there, but he opts not to. So we are still sitting 5v4. That Everybody was a really, chill. man, the, the tactic was perfect, right? The flash comes out. MSL has like a, over a full second to hit that shot. He needs to get Device off the top of the default box. And I really hate to criticize AIM because, you know, this is a game where we like to see people shoot each other in the back of the head, but there's a moment where the, the mechanics don't meet with the tactics and tactics are perfect. And then Device ends up killing MSL as well. At least there's a kill from the grave, but it's still 4v3. Yeah, MSL from beyond able to burn one. Now we do still have three players for Astralis here on the A site, so we're ready for the hit. Again, Zipex gonna play the same angle on this smoke. That's one of his own smokes, right? Gives him a huge advantage when he can see the kneecaps of the players coming up. It's Cajun who has a further back angle that enables the trade, but now he's in a one versus four. Not ideal, although he steals away the first one. And remember, Magus, two health. So a couple of headshots could have got the job done, but that's Yugi to eight and one as Astralis lead by five. I'd like to see if anything from North changes in this round if they decide to, with the amount of money they have, attempt to go back to the A site and play old Vertigo or try to explore some new parts of the map. I wonder how comfortable they are going for mid control here because I think that was one of the things that was most encouraged from Valve to the T side is adding more value to T and making it very hard to hold. Removing the sandbags means there's a number of angles now the CTs can't feel as comfortable. There's that Case Dorado angle, that right angle against the wall that you can play if you're very pushed up, but that's a dangerous spot to play now that you don't have a sandbags player to cover you. And then you have the main big boxes that you get double that you get uh, boosted up on top of but those are angles that the T's can clear without worrying about another one so there's not a huge risk in going mid or attempting to go mid at the moment um, especially if it's delayed and especially if Astralis know you're going to try to take A every round it has been this consistent A start the beginning of all the rounds we're getting these gun duels early so Astralis again not uh, not shying away from the utility oh mm. magisk you're going to take that one any day of the week. This is kind of an ask and you shall receive moment where they're spamming both ways. I mean, there's a handshake yeah. here. No one's going to run up into the site unless a kill comes down in the T's favor early. And before that, you're going to be responding to spam back and forth. You know, sitting in a smoke like that, you're, you're kind of begging the situation to come your way, but you're not really giving yourself a chance to fight back. I like that device is playing around to this boost angle. I feel like uh, I feel like going for for just a deeper angle to peer down a ramp is a little bit dangerous when you know all these bodies have been here early for North. So at least he's got that safer setup. But again, he will try to pry his eyes over smoke. Yugi with that secondary AWP is at the top of mid, and he peels one off. We have seen near no mid play up until this point. But uh, 30 seconds left over, two versus five, desperate for some sort of an opening. Completely separate are the members of North, but Cajun's still successful. Now we saw that head. Yugi's been seen here by Christu, who is the bomb carrier. So as much as Cajun B can be successful over on the A site, it really hinges on Christu, and he has now equalized this. 15 seconds left. If they're gonna make the play happen, if they're gonna try and play for this win, they've gotta do it now. But oh. Device even giving them another chance. Eight, if seven. only the plant. Oh, oh he my god. It. He's yeah. got it. 
And Debris is going to wait and just listen. Yeah, he might actually. Nelly Furtado. Not even try to, try to save this. What was that reference? Oh, Nelly Furtado. Oh, Nelly. Great okay. artist. Right, yeah, yeah. Fly you know, back like to the 90s. Bird. Yeah. <laughs> Man, uh, 2v5. Try to boil that down. I mean, there's it hinges on, on two players, obviously. Chris Dew and, and, and Cajun B both hitting their plays perfectly and doing so completely individually. So, I mean, those were very much independent variables that both lined up, you know. Yeah. The stars aligned, and, and this time not for Astralis. That's true. I, and I think even if Device hits his shot, there's a chance the plan can go down, but Chris Dew has to kill her device in that same sequence immediately and then run. <sighs> But that being said, it'd be a 1v1 Dupree could try. But before all this, what's most important, I think, is the fact that they tried the same dead A take that didn't work out. Uh, MSL got killed trying to pull off the same lurk he did or tried the round previous. And then after that, they incorporated mid and didn't and basically had two players lurk out. One player got caught immediately, and then that still ended up having them win the round. So we can see the immense value from trying to take mid control for them, oh. even if it's predictable, and even if it doesn't go so well at first. Yeah, we had a little change of pace here, boys. We've had Zipex kind of playing that forefront using uh, what was utility off of the crane and a little bit of wall bang to try and hold back the A players. This time, Device has had enough. He tries to change pace, shoves that op down their throats, and suddenly, it's going to take North over towards this B bomb site. Now, Yugi has a passive angle, but he is fully blind, as was Chris Dew. So that definitely helps. Cuts off the head of the snake and now looks to deal with the wiggling body that was the last two players. Yugi, solid hold, solid start. 12 and 2 here on Vertigo. Now, the flashes are good, but I don't know if that's... That might not have been AZ's fault. It could have been... It, it could have been Chris Dew or whoever was in front there to eat the flash, but it seemed like the flashes were meant to help Line the players on the site while the T's dodge and make space all the way up, all the way. And I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt because Chris Dew did a great job of making space in a previous round. So I had a feel I have a feeling he was meant to run out like that. Maybe just mistimed it or the angle was a bit off and he ate it and they ended up losing. But there's a moment there where if he's not blind, he kills Yugi on the B site, and then we got a brand new round. So another round that hinges almost on the single kill. Uh, to at least secure a bomb plant, you know, not necessarily win the round, but to get to a place where they they, they, they could be favored once again. Um, and I don't mind the attempt on B. It worked out so well previously, and they already were down 3v5. A group up B explode makes more sense than the, the, the A takes that can be so laborious and so nade intensive and take, you know, 50 to 60 seconds when you're already down two guys at the very start of the round, two utility belts, already wiped out. Got Dupree with prying eyes down towards B. Looking to peel one off, but uh, nobody presents their head just yet. We're just kind of feeling out this map. I feel like North wanting to maybe change gears here. MSL licking his fingers, flipping through the playbook. And it seems like regardless of whatever page he lands on, it's going to be Chris Dew on the forefront. Young player, big job. Uh -oh. Over towards middle, we get Cajun oh, hopping into Magisk. Oh man, it's all cut down. Even Dupree over towards B, shut out north. They found zero footing until now. Gave a little something to work. He's got two more players to present himself, and that's that. So four survivors for Astralis. You know, North kind of just, uh, I think, like, uh, without realizing it, walking into the bear trap that was both Magisk and Dupree. Each player picking up a 2k on the forefront of the pinch. So they found nothing there in round 10. 8-2 is the lead for Astralis. One of the big troubles about being too well drilled in, in map control takes or executes is not covering things that you expect to be respected by grenades. So like, you know, Magic jumping up over the sandbags, you can see the flash and the smoke were designed to decentivize the, decentivize the play that he was making. And our second player comes out swinging, not even expecting him to be there, even though he had just killed uh, his teammate because it was too quick to call. But the reaction is that this side of the part, this part of the, of mid is smoked. And uh, we also threw a flash at him. He's probably not gonna be on top of the sandbags. But Magis is that kind of dude who's, who's going to get uh, a couple of kills in a very unfavored situation like that. 
Yugi, to be tested, tries to get out of the way of the pistols, but AZ will find one kill. So a single kill there for North on their pistol round. They lost Christu very early. All too easy for Astralis, flexing the weapons. And look at them, working on uh, Lent payments. Those AKs do not belong to them, and yet they wield them well. Now, I, I want to give respect to the fact that a lot of pro teams are, you know, willing to 5v5 the A site, but I would wonder why there aren't, there isn't a thought to try to draw utility out on other parts of the map before going back to A, because the players on other parts of the map will eventually come to A to throw smokes, molotovs, flashes for retakes, or to help defend if they, if they rotate early. So you can get that same utility out from a player on another side of the map and not risk getting spammed down or taking these very, what feels like random fights on the A ramp in the beginning of the round. But it feels like this is the battle that North prefer. But it's not just North. I feel like a lot of teams like this. And I, and I just wonder if that's the best course of action. Smoking off the tarp, flashing past it. Zipex, I feel a bit too much pressure. Magisk, he wants to still try and flex this, but he loses his teammate. So they make the conscious decision to give it up. And North, well, they'll take that real estate any day. We're back to old ways. Magic's pretty comfy here. It's not the guy, it's just not the guy you want to peek you on this angle. I think of anybody else, maybe in the world, you know, for him to hold, hold an angle like this, probably the scariest, the most guaranteed to at least get a single kill. Oh, but Magic, did he push up? Yeah, he came back around. Ooh, and MSL looking to do one better there. He actually creates a great distraction for Gaiden AZ to combine on site. Look at that wall of smoke. CTs were kind of caught between it, and then losing short meant they had to plug a hole. Ooh, that seems to come out of nowhere. Hello, North. Nice to see you. Five survivors. Well, the they loose. gave up, uh, kind of, they gave up that ramp moment at the start of the round and then just walked right back in. Yeah, did Gate actually lurk up through the left side of the bomb site? Yeah, smoke, I must think? have been past the crane and then, yep, left into short. You know what? Maybe they. So I was wondering. First of all, Magic pushes up by himself and then and then ends up getting killed. He's done it before. He's like gotten the kill, so he's probably pretty confident. But even if he had killed MSL, then maybe Gate could have lurked out, killed him, and shot him in the back, and then you know continued on to have that great round on top of it. So. Pro Potentially a kind of a good response from North, understanding that MSL is going to make that play. I think I initially thought, you know, this is too strong. If MSL just sits here, holds us down. But um, they're clearly thinking about how to advance from uh, previous rounds where they've had trouble. So it seems like they're identifying that as the pressure point of the A site for the initial portions of the round, trying to spam through the wall, trying to get that kill, and try not to get off by device. And it looks like once they do that, they actually have a, a good chance of cracking open the rest of it. it, it, it Magisk, in particular, is in a very hard to trade spot. Going back to the early numbers game. Again, that smoke that keeps them off. Ooh, that's damage. 99 from the op versus AZ. Device, you're not supposed to be on that side of the ropes, my dude. Oh my god, I'd be so scared. Yeah. That's the kind of kid <laughs> who falls in the gorilla pit. It's like watching someone step on like the plexiglass on the top of the CN Tower. Yeah. You get no scared thanks. irrationally. Man, I can't even stand on the manholes in the street because I'm not falling into the sewers. <laughs> it's the last not place, the place I want to be. be. Oh. And actually, I, I take that back. That's the last place I want to be. On the receiving end of devices mm. on, just a smidgen of his forehead peeks over. And how about another? Same place, same time of day. You know, they say lightning doesn't strike twice, but Device maybe has other ideas. He's still dodging flashbangs in the midst of it all, smoke denying any kind of vision, and he is very much alone here, so a dangerous game to play, but oh my God. regardless, swapping to the M4, let's go. Shut a up. All trades. He stops that bomb, and he knows he has another target here. Chris Freaking dude, top cruise, deleted. Dude. Mission impossible, I think not. Completed. I'm out of here. That's nuts. Can you believe this guy is 55 years old? He's still got it. He has still got it. That's just wonderful. Out to the rifle, knows where the trade player is coming in and thinking that he's fallen back. Has a brand new weapon. 
Damn, man. And uh, yeah, there's another threat here. They can't even get to Magus if they can't get through device. Oh. Utility to pressure, though. I mean, obviously, confidence boiling over the brim at this point. They try to set themselves back up on that early extension towards A. Oh, these spam fights have been so on point. But Zipex will stay alive for now. Just barely. He's going to make sure he puts teammates in front of him so that he's not the first to fall. Who do you think is winning the spam fights? I, I agree. I think, you know, North are actually been very on point with their few tries through the wall. Yep. The Astralis have had some good spams back. I can't really tell who's who's the better. Who's the better team at that? I'm not sure who's better at it, but I know that North are benefiting from it the most. Okay, I like that. That's probably that's probably the best way to look at it. Boost and Sue. Device perched up. Shot Ooh. in. And Magis with a second. They know that MSL's still here. He tries to go over, and this time it works. Last time he was denied that shenanigan. Love that he tries it again, and it works. Chris is going to give cover so that MSL can get out of position once the bomb goes down, and we have ourselves from the 2v3 to the 2v2. Oh, he's dropping the Molotov early. Oh, and MSL goes for a peek. Thinks that maybe he would find Yugi moving his feet, trying to get away from the flames, but that's not the case. Chris Du, he's going to get close on this. Again, it's just going to take a couple of kills if he wants to finish the clutch. He's inside of the smoke. They're going to have to go around it. He knows they're tapping that bomb, trying to get him to make his move. He guts down the first one, but it's a oh. stick. A disgusting stick that Yugi gets away with. Chris Du survives the round, but it is still an 11th for Astralis. It doesn't affect the money. We're moving into the last round, 11 to 3. That is a nice try from North. You know, they get closer. They've been developing on the A site, you know, can't say they haven't been, but I feel like, uh, you know, we saw both ends of that Molotov. We saw how it was thrown and how we his teammate reacted to it. So I think Christu lined it up to land in the doorway so Yugi couldn't stand in a spot like that, but he was there. And then MSL, I think, was was going to peek for that, that, that heaven shot, but somebody was still in the doorway. So maybe the Molotov didn't go as deep as he expected. Either way, fast control here. Take it. Yeah, there was. Oh! Device tries something very different this round. Goes peering into the depths of B and dies for it. Zipex, he's trying to... Whoa! Trying to? No. Succeeding at? Yes. Holding this <laughs> insight. A little grenade to help his adventure. And uh, listen, it's still a two versus two, but the HP favors that of North Christu. He's going to try his best to just fly through this B-bomb site. Man's running with a bottle in his hand. Gonna crack it over the top of Dupree, perhaps, but nope, he is turned back the other way. So Cajun, five kills, 11 deaths on the half. First attempt at a clutch, and we know he can pull them off, but he's gonna have to figure out where both these CTs have gotten off to. He's very wary of that deeper member, but he has the space to try and get around towards CT. He takes damage, oh. but not as much damage as he deals the other way. 33 HP combined for Astralis. They're gonna have to group up and try to find the timing, but at the same time, they don't wanna get sprayed down by the same shots. So Cajun now a little bit flustered here. He's dodging the utility. He sees both players Woo! and he hits the nail. We have seen them impress before and rock solid holds, rock solid performance. 16 and six for Yugi, 14 and six on device. Hell, even Magis got 12 kills. So yeah. they've come out swinging here, Mohan. Yeah, they're rock solid. I'm rock hard. Everything's going super well right now. <laughs> it's a great Wednesday. <laughs> But uh, we also have a little bit of pressure here for North. MSL gets gushed, so you could argue he's lucky to be alive. He'll fall back. He still has that precious grenade. It's become his sole purpose to dunk that on someone's noggin. But he kind of cheats back into the depths of his bomb site. There are multiple frags here, so they're just welcoming them onto the bomb. Whoop! Yugi, good job. Fakes the plant, gets out, expects that they would go for such a tricky play. And there's the follow-up nade. That one lands. You can see how deadly it really could have been. Look at Dupree here. He's the insurance policy. Cajun's not going to check this corner. So now that flank has been dealt with. Everybody on the bomb site for Astralis can set their eyes forward. And they're all on the same page. Bomb already halfway gone. 
Ooh. And it's going to get difficult to ex exit the elevator. Another couple of kills coming in. This is just a frag fest for Astralis. Way too easy. No response back for North at all. We are sitting on a pretty 12-4 score. And what we're seeing, you know, is this ready, set, go moments where once the bomb, before the bomb gets planted, it's this explode contact up the A ramp. It's not one player lurking, one player lurking in here. It's once something happens, everybody goes. And then when the bomb gets planted, the, the hats get switched, right? The T's become CT's and the, the CT's have to wait to try to do the exact same thing to the A site that the T's did up the A ramp. And that's why all the kills just come in a flurry so quickly after they explode out of that choke point. Um, this time doesn't work out so hot for North, uh, but but that's what they have to do, sadly enough. It's, uh, Valve continues to make changes on, on this A site. I really do hope that that one corner that Devices Molly just got stuck in is on the list. But uh, hello hmm. and goodbye, North. Blink and you miss it. That's four ump headshots in a matter of mere seconds. Cajun B doesn't understand that he's actually alone. Oh, and the poor guy never even gets a chance to pop with the USP. So excellent anti-eco making mincemeat of what was that short A stack. Device walks into the deadliest portion of the entire map and gets away with no sweat on his brow. Yeah, he's pretty versatile. Good at badminton, counter-strike, opping, rifling, umping, you name it. Device has it in spades. 18 probably and 7. Handball. handball. He, he probably knows how to play that soccer game Europeans love. I don't want to see any kick bonus. football. He probably does. He probably does. I think he had like a, what was it? Uh, an Achilles injury that stopped him from badminton. Something, something like that. He was talented. You know, for a total player. badass, that sounds pretty lame. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Astralis have done more utility damage than three members of North have done in total damage. <laughs> we, need, we need a name to associate to the fun fact generator here because uh, <laughs> someone's spitting fire today, man. How are you yeah. going to do North like that? I mean, yesterday, there were some very confusing stats that were also hilarious and very memorable at the same time yesterday as well. That is kind of... Yeah, that's an Omega Rolf. Uh, also, you missed a chance here. Uh, I'd like you to step the game up. It, instead of nade domination, it should be domination. Uh, okay. Just saying. I was hearing I was hearing some uh, herthroics in the chat for the last game because of the <laughs> botched defuse. Can Can you believe it? I mean, how are we supposed to follow that, Launders? Harry and Hugo. Oh, there it is. Taking us. Holy crap! Oh. Live production. I'm here to do my it part. Looks, yeah, not bad. Not bad. I maybe when we're old and ugly, when we're old and ugly, we can you can maybe take a job in production and uh, be off camera. Not to say, I, I think I just said production's ugly. I didn't. Yeah, that's I, not what I meant to say. I was gonna let you get away with it, but you. I tried you, to pack it in with old. Implicated but yourself. I'm just trying to tell jokes. I'm really not trying to hurt people's feelings. That was a complete mistake. Honestly, everyone production's way harder than me. If you guys have seen DreamHack production, some of the most beautiful people that you'll ever meet inside and out device uh yeah all right pause comes to a close man doesn't let go of w runs all the way into the depths of the b site and that creates so much space and gets so much information that dupree can confidently come around the corners look astralis aren't even ready for such a pace they have to go back and get that bomb and all the while still maintaining this bomb site Sure enough, somebody tries to jump over top. That's AZ, who has managed a second. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This was not supposed to happen. A three versus four turned even keel, and here comes Yugi with a cheeky mid flank. Again, mid hasn't really been an issue for either team. The T's tend to avoid it, but look at Kreeskoo confidently just running into the mix of what remained there for Astralis. He's trying to deny that 14th round, but they'll take it regardless of his effort. 10 points of a lead here, 14 to 4. Astralis looking for a quick day in the office. It's a really tough situation when you're on the A side and, and B side in low numbers, and that's being attacked by mid as well. There's really nobody that can hold your hand in terms of guidance and nobody that can really help you in terms of rotations just because mid can threaten the A rotates. It slows everyone down. Um, so it's a difficult situation for the CTs to be in. Another another value of mid, of course. Interesting push up here by the CTs. I think they, we're getting they literally, weird. 
open their open the door to their living room and ran inside. Hey guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so we're getting into that weird territory at the at the end of a blowout map where where if you're on the side of north you can just you can start getting away with whatever. You know, this is a perfect moment for MSL to to pull out some kind of unorthodox rush, some unexpected level of aggression. And we see it work out for the moment. Not only a four v four, but but device is, is barely alive. Yeah, it's a read based on slow mid. Of course, if 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 a T comes swinging out, maybe Cajun just gets cleaned like a clock but if they're playing back like that with a supporting flash it could make sense and it has been a lot of slow mid so maybe a nice conditional read oh minimal cover here to try and play with inside of the b bomb site so az removed first and foremost they have spotted a player on that construction boost over but look at Cade ready to go inside of the bomb site he's got his back covered by cajun dupree starting to remove other players but he dies too inside of the site so the flank is all that remains we saw cajun close the first half with a 1v2 clutch in near this exact situation but now he is the ct so can he manage the retake trying to take shots at the first, that's Magisk pinned down behind Orange. I was talking about how Quad becomes such a limited position, and you can see that with Dupree. He has no cover, but still swings wide and takes Astralis to map point, 15 to four. It's really hard, man, to defend the B site. I mean, once you lose mid control and you're having right behind you, it's such a difficult site to defend now. And that was all in order to make it more appealing for the T's. But basically, sometimes the battle can be begin and end with mid control. And there's still a lot to be learned about the site itself. But, you know, we saw how creative Astralis were trying to get on their B holds by having like a double stack up on the outside of B push forward. And that area in general is kind of where the site is now. It's kind of like the long A on dust two. It assists the site without being the bomb plant zone. Everything's kind of shifted. And you can play for yourself there. Ooh, shadow advantage. Device swinging out and finding MSL. So a five versus three here as we are preparing ourselves to close on Vertigo. Not starting the series as hot as they did versus G2 yesterday. North, I'm not going to write them off. For those of you who did not watch our North American game last night, we had Chaos lose like 16-3 and then make the comeback versus Liquid. So we will write this map off as an anomaly. Who knows if they rebound? It's not gonna be easy, let's be real. And it's also not yet over. Who am I to say? 3v5 north, maybe, perhaps, there's a chance. Cajun's able to close down that first duel and Dupree was on his own, so there's a little bit of timing for Cajun, but he is stuck, nowhere to go, and losing teammates, he's naded of all things. Gade with everything to do here. Map one, very much on the line, and he's denied.